This is Fiori's Segno. It's one of the most important folios in the Fiori manuscript. It is a representation of Fiori's art and martial arts in general. And it starts the introduction by saying to the section, by this master with his sword signifies the seven blows of the sword. And the four animals signify four virtues, namely advice, quickness, strength, and daring. And he wants to be good in his art from these virtues together they will have their part. Now what he's saying here is that these represent the principles of martial arts in general and Fiori's art. One of the first things you'll see on this is that we've got the man in the middle, um, who we assume is Fiori himself, surrounded by seven swords. And you'll note that the seven swords, if you know the rest of Fiori's um, itself, do not necessarily represent the actual angles of blows that Fiori describes. So, for example, the two downward blows, the two fendentes, and the two upward blows, the two satanis, are not the same angle as described in the sword section of Fiori. Now, this is not unreasonable and not uncommon. What we've got here is we've got, if you take Fiori's head and the seven swords themselves, they represent eight points at equal angles away from each other. And this is quite a common way of representing things in uh, Renaissance and late medieval, on medieval Europe. Um, because they're looking for a form of perfection in the way the diagrams are shown. And there's a lot of visual representation of Fiori, which actually, to the, the viewer or the reader of the manuscript, would understand straight away. They're a little bit like road signs on, or traffic signs on the road. And the way that we understand what symbols mean today, they understand the symbolism at the time. So even though these angles might not seem correct or are not actually correct or described, they are actually correct for the principle of what's been um, shown here. And they do show the quadrants, the sections of attack on the sword. And the same way, the, the punter, the thrust, which is the sword pushing upwards from the bottom, is the way they would represent a thrust at the time. It's not something coming up from below or through the legs. So what we have here is we have the seven colpi blows. They're not cuts, they're blows that Fiori shows. And they're showing that the angles of attacks, the areas of attacks that may, you may receive on, or may actually perform yourself. Now, around Fiori the man, um, we have four animals, and these are key to martial principles. So let's take the top one first. What we have here is, it's described as advisement, and we have a lynx. Now, it doesn't look a lot like an actual lynx, and what we've got to remember is that uh, a lot of the people who were artists or were creating these manuscripts at the time had never actually seen these animals, and they were working off descriptions of animals. So somebody might say, for example, uh, it looks a little bit like a cat, but with a longer or shorter tail, or they'll just describe it, and the person would work from a description rather than actually any actual um, visual image that they've ever seen or actually seen the animal itself. So the first one is uh, the lynx at the top. And what we have here is an advisement. Better than me, the lynx no creature sees. And by that, I always place with compass and with measure. Now, that's interesting because we actually look at the animal closer. We see that the lynx has got two things. One is it's got a golden collar on. And all of the animals have a golden collar. And the golden collar represents the students within Fiori, the scholars. And what this is showing is that this is uh, a way of actually performing the art. They're not the masters themselves. Um, they actually are the scholars of the art. Now, in one of the later manuscripts, the Florius, the Paris one, which is arguably after Fiori's death, the signal in there shows the animals with crowns on. And that uh, indicated that manuscript was given to somebody who'd uh, achieved the whole of the art. So now they understood everything. So they moved from being having the golden collar to having a golden crown. The crown represents the master. But going back to the lynx, the lynx has a compass, and this is a measuring compass as would be used on maps and uh, similar to actually measure distance. So what we've got here is the lynx showing the advisement, judgment, distance judgment, being able to understand. Um, where your opponent is, what your opponent is about, but also the distance to your opponent and what is required to make that distance. If we next move down to the elephant at the bottom, and what we've got here is strength and or fortitude, depending upon your translation. Elephant I am and a castle. I carry for a load and I do not needle nor lose balance. Now, 
the medievals had heard about the um, elephants in India and the various constructions and everything um, that were on the backs of the elephants and that people sometimes fought from them. And the way they translated this was actually as a, they thought of it like a castle actually being on the back. So the idea is that you fight from your elephant. Now if we look at the elephant again, we can see this uh, representation of an elephant has been done by description. It looks a bit like a dog with a long nose. So sometimes obviously describe it, it's not, no one's actually seen, the artists never seen the elephant. But the principle is that the elephant itself, you fight from your elephant. Now, your elephant is your lower body, your legs. Um, you fight from your area of strength. All your strength itself comes from your legs. So, what he's saying here is to employ your hips, to employ uh, your lower body strength rather than upper body strength. And this is this is quite key to a lot of martial arts. But there's more here. In the medieval beasts at the time, which were um, descriptions of animals, uh, there were some quite fantastical ideas about what some creatures that they'd never seen before um, had as powers or represented. So things like dogs and cats they knew quite a lot about, but things like elephants they knew very little about. And so stories became, uh, or myths became fact. And one of the things around elephants was that elephants could not bend their knees. Um, so if an elephant ever got to, went to ground, it couldn't get back up again. So a principle behind showing an elephant is that you don't go to ground either. So not only are they strong and you fight in an elephant, obviously a strong fighting platform, like your lower body, um, but also you should not go to ground. Um, if we move across to the um, tiger side of it, what we've got here is a tiger with an arrow. And it's quickness. I am tiger, I am very prepared to run and turn so the arrow from the sky will not excel me. Now, the actual word tiger comes from the Greek for speed and arrow. And so these two are heavily related. So we've got a tiger hold an arrow, and this is effectively just speed of attack, actual efficiency and speed. Now, it's worth noting that it's on Fiori's right-hand side. Now, assuming that most people are right-handed at the time, the attack, your speed comes from your right, comes from your right hand, and that's a nice sort of way to look at it really if we go across to the um, lion itself daring and we're here we've got a lion with a heart no one carries a more daring heart than me the lion but of battle i make an invitation to others now it's a standard representation of in the heart with a lion together a lot of people know this means bravery and daring and again note that it's on the left hand side which is where the heart actually is in the body but it's also if you're a right-handed fighter it tends to be the side that's more exposed if you were using a shield you'd shield the left hand side so if you're going to get close to an opponent be daring then it's your left hand side that you're exposing first so this is where bravery and daring comes in and this is interesting now because this is where the four animals need to be in balance so let's just take the line for example let's say you're not daring and so you won't get close you a bit of fear you go in there that means you're slightly at a distance which means that your links judgment is wrong that means you've got to extend your actual movement because your distance is out of balance now now to extend your movement forward which means you probably might need to take a step and a half or a slower st or a longer step which will destroy the strength of your elephant and because of all that together the speed of your tiger is now destroyed in other words you'll make a very slow attack on the counter side to that, if you're taking the uh, line of the example again, if you're overly brave and you get too close, you'll be struck before you can react. And this is where you'll basically destroy your target. You're not fast enough to actually do um, to respond to that attack. And what it means is here is that the four animals need to be in balance. If you're going to the lynx, for example, if your distance judgment is wrong, you'll destroy your tiger. If you're too brave or too um, cowardly on the lion's side, you will destroy your distance judgment and your tiger and so on. When you have the four animals in balance, it means that you actually are in the right place. You actually have the place itself. And this is why this is the segment is such an important um, folio, because it's showing you what sort of attacks can be done, where they're going to come from or where you're going to perform them and how you should balance your martial art. And that is in essence the uh, segment of Fiori. So a whole martial art and a single folio, very nice and very neat.